My guest today is Zach Miller. Zach, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Nice to be here. Thanks for being on my show. What do you do? So I am a data science educator. Um, I work for a company called Metis, um, where we focus on bringing in students that have sort of small to no background in analytics and coding and math and try to get them up to speed so they can get employed as a data scientist or a data analyst. Uh, is that sounds like a boot camp, is that right? It's essentially a boot camp, but we also have some other offerings that are you know, online courses, things like that. Excellent. And you're an instructor? Yeah, I'm one of the senior data scientists, so I, I'm one of the instructors. Outstanding. Uh, you know a lot about data science. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but enough <laughs> to get by. You know uh, a lot about teaching data scientists science to people that are just, I, mean, I, th I imagine a lot of your students are new to it. This is a new topic, right? Yeah. So, I mean, they come in a lot of time, I've never seen Python or you know, linear algebra. So getting them from there to like, how do you run a logistic regression? Like that's, that's sort of what I specialize in. All right. And you just gave a talk here at the Ideas Conference. And I, I think that your target audience for that presentation was people that are relatively new to data science. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Um, what was the topic? Yeah, we're trying to sort of dispel some uh, myths that data science, new people trying to get into data science run into, um, like all of the challenges. Like, there's so much information out there. How do they sift through what's important and what's not? What is important? Um, so the importance is, are the basics. Um, a lot of the myths that come up are, you know, do I have to be able to do these advanced techniques before I can, you know, get started and actually, like, do a small thing before I get to the big thing. So uh, one of the examples I gave is um, do, I, do I start out learning deep learning um, and TensorFlow and Theano and all of these extra tools, or do I start out learning you know, machine learning and the basics of log linear regression, logistic regression, things like that? Oh, okay. And you sort of hinted at the answer to that question, yeah. the question itself, which is uh, the, you want to learn the basics before you learn the advanced, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no sense in starting out with deep learning if you haven't master the, the simpler techniques first. Um, you got to have those simpler techniques to understand what deep learning is doing, why you would build deep learning the way you do it, like how you get the data ready for deep learning. Mm. Um, if you can't do the simple things, there's, there's no way that you'll understand the more advanced stuff. Do, or do you get students to come in and they think that they want to hit the ground running and build everything on day one? Or oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Um, we have, we've, We've had people come in and say, I'm going to do computer vision for my very first project. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think you are. <laughs> All right, I see. All right. Uh, what are the other the, the myths that you've dispelled in your talk? Um, so a lot of people want to know whether they actually have to know how to program. Um, I mean, I think they well, come that's in. That's an interesting question. Yeah. To do, in order to do data science and deep learning, do I need to write code? Yeah. And a lot of the times they're like, you know, I can, I can load the file in Python and I uh -huh. can open, say, scikit-learn or some other module sure. and I can get the data to it, but do I really need to know how to like, write code that does things outside of that um, is a very common question that I see all and the time. What's the answer? Um, I think for me the answer is absolutely you have to be able to. Um, okay. If you want to be employed nowadays, um, I mean, maybe five years ago you could get away with doing some of that when it was still not as widely accepted in industry. Um, but some of what? Some of uh, just using tools to do yeah. all of your just machine learning? Like, when, I, when I first became aware of data science, I was in the academic side, but I came uh -huh. aware of it because some of my friends were like, look, I, all I learned was I picked up some Python and how to load scikit-learn, and they're paying me a lot of money to go do things. Okay. Um, but now like we work with employers all the time, and they're like, your students have to be able to fit into our pipeline. Like, they have to be able to get data out of our data warehouse. They yeah. have to be able to clean the data in a way that our team understands. They have to be able Cleaning to... Cleaning data, that's the big part. <laughs> yeah. um, and they have to be able to make reproducible code, or like we can't actually use them as part of our data science team. So... Like the the balance has definitely shifted up towards the software engineering side, I think. Okay, well that's good news for those of us who started writing code a long time ago. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, I mean, the other thing that I focused on is how sciency is data science, because you get a lot of questions of you know if I get the data to a model, am I done? Um, and I think that's sort of a a rigged question to some extent, because yes, you get the data to your model and you're technically done, but. Mm -hmm. That leaves out all the stuff you have to do beforehand, which is come up with a business question. How do you optimize the code to actually, and, and design a test that tells you whether you've solved the business question? Uh, how so do you in do other words, how do you know when you're done? Right. And I mean, you have to design a metric to begin with. Like The way that science works is you come up with a hypothesis, you design an experiment, you run the experiment, and then you, you check, st do I have a statistically significant result? And I think data science has to become that. Um, it's already shifting towards that, but it has to continue to go that way. Um, Otherwise, you're just opening yourself up for, you know, how do I know when I'm done? Have I actually solved a business problem? Have I answered the question that my business needs me to answer? Um, all of those are basically just the scientific process applied to data. All right. what, what do you think is the hardest challenge for students that are learning data science? Um, I think it's the flexibility. Um, 
this is sort of off the cuff, but um, a lot of times they come in and they want a checklist because they're they're coming from other jobs where, you know, like my job was to get this data into Excel, write, make a report, and that was my job day to day. Right. Um, and in data science, your job is, hey, can we optimize this process? Go. And there isn't a set formula for that. Either. Right. And it's it's very creative, right? You, you walk in and you say, oh, maybe I can use this, this variable that we've stored that isn't really about sales optimization, but I can learn something about my customer and then use that for sales optimization. So trying to be creative enough and flexible enough to answer those questions is very challenging for someone who's new to the field. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, when I got into software development, uh, which was really kind of a second or maybe even a third career for me, uh, one of the things that drew me to it is it's sort of a combination of right brain and left brain thinking. Right. There's the right brain part because of, part because it is a science. It is it is a discipline. It is uh, there are rules that you need to follow. But you touched on the left brain. I may have mixed up, but the the creativity side right. of it that you have to be able to figure out how to solve a problem, given you know kind of sometimes an ephemeral set of instructions. You've got to ask you know what question am I trying to answer and how do I put these pieces together to get to that answer. Yeah. And on it's top art of, and art and it's science, I guess. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, people think about data science is like I'm trying to do a regression you know I'm trying to draw a line through this and make a prediction or I'm right. trying to classify things but a lot of times it's not very clear what you should classify to answer the business question it's not ah. like hey I'm going to just say is this person going to buy this it's is this group of people like if, if I target them with this ad can I get them to think about buying it this down the road things like that mm. and that's not a, a traditional like I walk in I know that I just have this data set and I make this classification right it's sure it's much more complicated than that yeah and I totally get that I'm, I'm relatively new to data science just the last year or so I've been diving into it and it's a different way of thinking it's not you don't start at line one <laughs> and move down to end yeah. the file. You, you, this, it's more iterative. And yeah. It's more. Uh, sometimes I don't even know that question until I actually look at the data and I realize yeah. it, the data tells me the questions. Yeah, and a lot of times you'll get a, somebody higher up in the business that says, "Hey, we we want to answer this question. We have this data set. Good luck." Um, and that's that can be very frustrating for yeah. someone Especially coming with in. Especially the new. crap data that they send you. <laughs> yeah, sixty like percent of the data is missing. Yeah. Figure out how to use this. <laughs> so it can give. Uh, there's a lot of creativity that goes into that. That's very challenging when you're coming into the field for the first time. Excellent. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Um, there's a huge field out there, but um, I would say the the main other thing that I, I like to tell people is that it's not magic. Um, you know, it's, it's math, it's, it's just linear algebra, calculus, statistics, and a little bit of Python, uh -huh. um, or, or R, I shouldn't bias too much. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is, it's not magic. It's just finding ways to combine those two. And there are a lot of great sources out there for doing that. And like, if you, you go to the internet, you can find blogs, you can find textbooks for free, like all of that's out there and you can, you can learn it all, um, sort of on your own time or if. I don't want this to become an ad, but there are also programs outside of mine or mine. Oh, by all means, tell, tell us about that. What, what do they do? Um, so that's the boot camp structure, if you're not familiar with it, is like you come in for 12 weeks um, every day, 9 to 5, um, and we basically start at, at the beginning. We, we say, okay, what is, how do you handle data in a, in a coding language? How do you do for loops? How do you do while loops? Uh, how do you get up to speed to the point where you can do all that? And so you can learn all of that stuff absolutely on your own mm -hmm. on the internet, but it might be a 12 month, a 24 month process. Um, we just try to condense that down by giving you access to people that know how to do that and how to teach it quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the main thing I'm getting at is like, if you're interested in this, it, it's not magic. It's not something that nobody can like only really PhDs can do. Like right. you just have to get out there and do it and start practicing and start reading about, I'd start with linear algebra. That's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Zach, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Technology is both your friend and your enemy. Um, if you really want to master it, you have to let it guide you, but you also have to be willing to sort of kick it in the face occasionally. Um, it's it's a beautiful tool and it also can ruin your day. So just be prepared to fail a lot if you're getting into this field, but also know that you're going to accomplish some really cool things.